We hear it all the time. I only use resonant antennas. Stick around and let's find out that these resonant antennas are a fact or a myth. Welcome to the House of Ham. I'm Bob WV7W. I'm going to try something a little different on the channel. I'm starting a new segment on ham radio myths that seem to persist in the hearts and minds of many hams. Now I'm calling this series, wait for it, Ham Radio Myths. Okay, not the most clever name I know. I initially thought about doing a Mythbusters-like thing, but I don't want to get YouTube strikes or cease and desist letters. Plus, this is really more about getting useful and interesting information out to you instead of being cute. So without further ado, here is the first episode of Ham Radio Myths. Now, in dipping my toe in the waters, we will take a look at resonant antennas and see if they're truly resonant or if that's just a myth. Now, you've most likely heard hams say, I only use resonant antennas. And I think a lot of hams tend to generalize this with really meaning an antenna that doesn't require the use of an antenna tuner. But are these antennas actually resonant? Now, before we can determine if our antenna is resonant, we must understand what resonance is. The electrical definition of resonance is the frequency where inductive and capacitive reactants cancel each other out, leaving us with zero reactants. This is the point where there is the most efficient transfer of power to the load, or the antenna. Reactance is the resistance of an AC current at a given frequency. So reactance is frequency dependent. Now, many hams think that resonance is where an antenna shows a 1 to 1 SWR. But what is SWR? More accurately, VSWR, or Voltage Standing Wave Ratio. Now, you probably know that SWR is the ratio of forward versus reflective power. Okay, that's great. But what is it from a more practical perspective? What causes it and how do we deal with it? SWR is actually caused by an impedance mismatch from the 50 ohms that the transmitter is designed for to what is actually presented by the feed line. Okay, fine. What is impedance? Impedance is that conjugate or complex value of real or ohmic resistance added with the imaginary or reactive resistance. The ohmic resistance is caused by the resistance in your feed line wire. Connections, ground losses, among other things. Now, if all we had to deal with was the purely ohmic resistive part, we wouldn't be talking about this at all. A true purely resistive load will be the same no matter what the frequency is. Think dummy load. Now, dummy loads are for the most part a purely resistive load, which is why they work over a large frequency range. It is that reactive resistance that we must deal with. Now, reactance, whether it's inductive or capacitive, will change with frequency. As frequency goes up, the inductive reactance goes up, and capacitive reactance goes down, and vice versa. There's actually way more to it than that, but this is a video for hams, not electrical engineers. If the concept of real and imaginary numbers twists your brain into a pretzel, fear not, you don't really need to understand this level of math to be a ham. If you want a full tutorial on that stuff, you'll have to look elsewhere. I'm not your guy. Next, we must determine what a resonant antenna is. Many hams think that an antenna that doesn't require an antenna tuner is resonant. But in theory, any antenna is only resonant at one fundamental frequency and certain harmonic frequencies. But we won't get into harmonics here. Also for this discussion, I'm not talking about antennas with traps or multi-element antennas, as those are essentially electrically separate antennas with a common feed point. Now, I'm going to take one of the simplest examples, the dipole. Now, the feed point impedance of a typical center-fed dipole in free space is 73 ohms. This would give an SWR of about 1.5 to 1 in a perfect theoretical world. But our world is far from perfect, and there are many things that can impact the impedance, like height above the ground, surrounding structures, your feed line, even the ground itself. But let's not get wrapped up in that for now. This means that a resonant dipole will not have a one-to-one -one SWR at the feed point. What you see at the other end of the feed line may be different, but that is a topic for a video coming soon. 
With all that said, from a practical real world operating, is any of this really going to matter? Probably not enough to make a noticeable difference. Trimming your antenna for a one-to-one -one SWR is not a bad thing, and you'll likely get good performance from it. But in most cases, the idea of a one-to-one -one SWR being resonant is a myth. The truth of the matter is we often detune our antenna systems from resonance to get a good SWR, and that's okay. The most important thing is to get an antenna up that fits your needs and gets you on the air. Don't get too focused on that perfect one-to-one -one SWR thing either. There's nothing wrong with trying to improve your antenna system, but realize that that dB or two that you may get will likely make a negligible difference to what the operator at the other end hears. In fact, the losses from a slightly off resonant antenna may be less than the losses in the feed line of an SWR that's too high. But that's a subject for another day. So there you have it. That so-called resonant antenna, although effective, is probably not resonant. Now please don't use this to berate your fellow hams that call their antennas resonant. That is not what this is about. This is about understanding what is happening with our antenna systems. Just understand that when someone says they have a resonant antenna, they probably mean they don't need an antenna tuner. Now as I said earlier, the most important thing is to get set up and get on the air and operate. Many of the things we do as hams is a compromise, but that's also the subject for another day. I hope you found this informative. Please keep in mind that I'm not an electrical or RF engineer, so if I got something wrong or if you have more information, leave me a comment below explaining your rationale for others to see. Also, if there's something on this topic you'd like to know more about, or if there are other ham radio myths you want me to dig into, leave me a comment as well and I'll see what I can do. Until next time, this is WB7W73.